Okay, guys, uh, this lesson is uh, called Residuals. Residuals talks about our, our line, how strong our line is, our linear regression line or a trend line, this book calls it, or the least square regression line or the best fitted line, depending on, on what your book calls. And the residual is just your uh, observed value that they usually they give you in the table minus your predicted value. And then so we're going to find the predicted value in this lesson here. So so I like, and your book will say Y minus Y, but I like to say Y minus Y hat. That's what my AP statistics uh, class uh, uh, textbook used. They used it, what's called a Y hat. So your book doesn't use this Y hat, but it just makes it easier to, the, the Y hat is going to be our predicted value right here. So the observed value, uh, the Y is the value that's usually given in the table. And the predicted values we get from our trend line or, or linear regression line or best fitted line, the equation that we got in the last lesson. So for example, in the last lesson, uh, we discussed the boiling point of water at different altitudes, and so they gave us this table right here. And so then we plotted these points on a, a graph right there, and then we fit a line that went right down the middle of that right there. And then we picked a couple of points right there, and then we found um, uh, the best fitted line with those two points. And we chose this point because it gave us B right there. So usually at both ends, we picked a couple of points right here. So if we pick these two points and then write an equation, so here's uh, the slope formula right here. We get this slope right here. And then since that's B right there, this was our trend line right here. Okay, so... So then we take that trend line and the predicted values come from plugging in these actual x numbers over here. You plug these x values into this equation and they give us what's called a predicted value. Okay, and they won't be the same, but they're going to be pretty close. So if I plugged in 597 into this formula right here, it'll get me a predicted value right here. It'll be something close to 210. It won't be 210, but or sometimes it's right on the money, but some, usually it's not. And then if we plugged in 5300, so you'll see I did that right here. So here's all these x values going in right here into this equation right here. So when we crank all these numbers out, that gives us what's called the predicted values right here. Okay, so those predicted values um, uh, we get from our trend line right there. And then our residual, remember our residual is um, the observed value, which is the y that they gave us, minus our predicted value. And those are called the residuals. Okay, so here's the residuals right here. We just do uh, the predicted value minus, I'm sorry, the the, the the observed value minus the predicted value right there. So if I do 210 minus this, it gets me that. And then so 201 minus this gets us that. Okay, so we just do lefty minus righty on these. Lefty minus righty, and they give us these residuals. So it's the observed minus the predicted uh, values right here. So a residual plot is a graph of the residuals from the x-axis. So Here's our, our uh, residuals right here. We're going to plot these on the x-axis. So it's going to have a different graph. It's going to have the same x-axis as our, as our original um, scatter plot graph right there. But our, um, our y-axis right here is going to be, it's going to reflect these residuals right here. So these residuals go from basically 0 to uh, either you know, uh, over one or uh, up to almost 1.7 uh, right there. So that's why we have these right here. So this would be 0 0.5, this is one, this is this is um, uh, 1.5 and so on. So when we start plotting all these points right there, so here's the first one right there. So we plotted uh, 597 comma negative 0 0.005. So there's 597 negative 0 0.005. This one's going to be at 5300 and negative 1.67. So 5300 is over here, and negative 1.67 is going to be somewhere down there, okay? All right, and then this one's going to be 4600, 1.667, okay? So there's that one, there's the next one, there's the next one right there. That's our residual plot of that linear regression line, or the trend line that our book calls it. So when we talk about residual plots, here's how to describe the data that they come from. If you see a residual plot like this, this is our most desired kind of residual plot right here. These residuals are randomly distributed and tight about the x-axis. If they're nice and close to the x-axis, then our trend line is a good fit of the data. Okay. So these residuals here are also random, but they're loose about the x-axis. So a line would fit the data, but it's not as strong. Let's go back over to this one here, the one that we did right there. Is that a strong uh, one right there? I'd say 
No, it's a, you know our, our line fits the data, but it's not as strong as it could be. So we probably could have picked a couple of different points uh, to represent that line a little bit better. So anyways, and then if you see something like this, these kind of residuals, if you get a residual plot like this, usually a line doesn't fit this data right here. So, so if they do a kind of a curved sort of fashion right here, usually the, the line doesn't, uh, won't fit the data very well if you get a residual plot like that. Okay, let's try this, you guys. Here, this table gives the median age of females living in the United States over the past few decades. So let's first make a table where X represents the time in years after 1970 and Y is the median age. So, so these are going to be my Y's right here and these aren't going to be the X's. We're going to do the time after 1970. So how many years is 1970 after 1970? Well that would be zero years. So this would be zero comma 229.2 okay and 1980 is 10 years after 1970 so this would be 10 comma that 31.3 this is going to be 20 comma 34 so that's where that's where we're going to get uh, those uh, numbers in that table right there okay and then uh, and so if we plotted those and we got a residual equation, the book is going to give us the residual equations right here. So here's a residual equation. Is it the best residuals? I don't know. We'll determine that in a little bit right here. We'll do that by what's called squaring the residuals. But here, uh, use the residuals to calculate the quality of fit of this line. So let's just say this line represents this after we plotted it and, and got a line right here. Well, y is the median age. So y is the median age right here. And x is the years since 19. 1970 right there okay all right so we'll use the residuals to calculate that and, and uh, so here we go right here so the predicted values well we're going to plug in uh, all of these X's into the equation that they gave us so when we plug in X equals 0 or well, we're going to get 29 that's pretty easy right there and then the residual right here is going to be the actual number minus the uh, the predicted number so 29.2 minus 29 is going to give us 0.2 right there. Okay, so when we plug in 10, we're going to get our predicted value of 31.5. So then 31.3 minus 31.5 is negative 0.2. Okay, so here's all the rest right there. So here's our residuals right here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and plot these residuals right here. So then they, here's a residual plot right here. So this is the years uh, after 1970 right here and then this uh, y-axis represents all the numbers that will be covered in these residuals right here. So when we graph 0.2 when x is 0, so when x is 0, 0.2 would be right there, okay? And so I don't know if I did them all. Yeah, I did them all right there. Okay, so there's a residual plot right there. So evaluate the quality of fit. So how would you say? Would you say those are tightly uh, uh, around the x-axis or loose around the x-axis? Well, except for this one point right here, these guys are pretty tight around that. So if there's just one, like they call it an outlier sort of, uh, then then let's just kind of you know disregard that one. And since all these residuals are small. Uh, and the points are tightly distributed around the x-axis, that line is a good fit for the model, okay? So this equation is a good fit for the model. Now, your book won't do the little hat symbol right there. I just like, it's just an old habit from AP Statistics. So analyzing squared residuals, okay? So when different people fit lines to the same data, they are likely to choose slightly different points and then get different lines and thus different equations right there. Okay, so so uh, another way to compare the accuracy is by squaring the residuals, and the closer the sum of the squared uh, the squared residuals is to zero, then the better the line of the fit data is. So let's use that previous example. And two students came up with different uh, fit lines. Student A came up with the one that we just did. Okay, and then student B came up with a slightly different one. So they got the same slope, but the y-intercept is 28.8. So we're going to calculate the residuals of both lines. Well, we already did for this one right here. And then uh, find the sum of the squares. So then we're going to square all those residuals and add them up. That's what sum means. And then we'll see which one is closer to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and complete these. All right, well, we did this one already right here. So uh, we found these ones in, a, in a, uh, a couple of slides ago right there. So what we're going to do is square these residuals. So square this. So this is going to get squared. Square them. So, so when we square 0.2, we get uh, 0 0.004. When we square negative 0.2, remember a negative squared is a positive, you guys. 
0 squared, 0 squared, and then 0 0.8 squared, or negative 0 0.8 when it's squared is positive 0 0.64. Okay, over here, so we're going to plug in uh, uh, these x values into this equation, and that's going to give us this column right here. So I'm just saving time. I got all of those um, uh, from prior right there, you guys. And then the residuals are going to be this number minus this number. So that's how we're going to get this column right here. So when we do that, we get that. And then when we square that, that's what we get right there. Okay, so now we're going to find the sum of the squares. So we want to see which one's more accurate. Which one is closer to zero when we add up these squares? So when we add up the sum of the squares, add all those up, this one comes to 0 0.72. Add all those up, this one comes to 0 0.60. And then so it's going to ask you which line has the smaller sum of squares. So uh, this line has the smaller sum of squares. So this line is a little bit more accurate than this line right there. All right, I hope that makes sense. If you're in my class, I would assign you guys that. Take care.